Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about the concept of peeling the layers of an onion. I've heard this for 20 years in my holistic healthcare field where doctors are saying we're peeling back the layers of an onion. I never use that analogy because what are we trying to get to? Like what's in the center? Well, I was at a re seminar recently and uh, the answer is this, intracellular infections. And um, what that means is bugs, organisms, in the cells. Now, for example, Lyme disease, you may have heard of this, from a tick bite. Well, the tick can transmit over 60 different organisms. So you got Lyme as one organism. And then you have uh, possibly bacteria, uh, viruses, uh, parasites. And uh, regardless of that, you can have an exposure to mold or candida. All these organisms can get inside the cells. Now, let me give you an analogy. So you go to a zoo, you walk in and they got barriers, walls, ditches, glass, fences. That's to protect you from the animals and vice versa. <laughs> uh, but imagine you walk into the zoo and there's no barriers. Now the lions can eat you and it's bad. Well, your cell walls can be penetrated by these organisms. And the more you have of that going on, the sicker you are and the harder it is to get better. So uh, let's talk about this uh, example of this onion right here. Okay, so I just mentioned the bacteria and the viruses here and to give you a little bit about that. But let's go outside more. That can uh, These various factors can cause health or, or lack of health. And so the next layer outside is predisposition. That's genetics. So everybody has a genetic predisposition to cancer or heart disease or autoimmune problems, maybe thyroid dysfunction. But there's this other topic called epigenetics, and that's your lifestyle choices, that's your food choices. Epi means on top of, like epicenter or epic. Epigenetics is more important than genetics in most cases, 99% of cases. So you can turn on your good genes and turn off your bad genes by having good lifestyle choices and food choices. The next layer outside this onion is uh, personal history. So that could include an accident, maybe you had whiplash from a car accident and it messed up your nervous system, and that can affect your whole body. Allergies and intolerances that you've acquired from maybe eating too much wheat, too many eggs, um, too much soy, so you can develop a food allergy because your body's just done with these foods. Um, past and present comorbidities, for example, maybe you had mono when you were 20 and you still have that virus, although you don't feel it, so that's what that means. Dental status, that's a big deal, bigger than we know. You can have a dental problem and then go to a dentist and it gets worse. And I'm thankful that I'm not a dentist because one mistake can ruin a person. It can misalign their jaw, causing migraines, uh, maybe... There could be an exposure from a bacteria in a root canal that then goes throughout the whole body from a bad dental procedure. Okay, the next layer out, this is the outer layer. That's the environment. So this is environmental exposures. For example, at work, occupational hazards. Um, I spent 17 years working on the family farm. I was exposed to pesticides. I had a parathion poisoning instance happen once in the mid-1990s. Um, that was not fun. Here's geopathic stress. What that means is the earth has its own frequencies. And if you sleep on one or you uh, live or work in one, that can affect your health. Sort of like electromagnetic frequencies. For example, if you have an appliance in your kitchen that's not grounded properly, that can screw up the wiring for the kitchen or maybe even the whole house. And then you're sick and you feel tired. I had this happen with a woman. It was her microwave in her kitchen. And they got that fixed, and five years of chronic disease just went away. Here's environmental toxins. So that could include not just pesticides, but um, herbicides like glyphosate, also known as Roundup. Or, for example, mining. Near where I live, there's these big mines. And then the dust goes up into the atmosphere, and it gets carried by the wind, and then it settles um, east of here. So this, it's in our environment. Um, if you grew up near a copper smelting plant, um, they can emit all kinds of dangers. And then you can't grow a garden in your backyard. 
Okay, so here's heavy metals, speaking of uh, mines and uh, copper smelting plants. So mercury in your teeth, lead in the paint. Um, heavy metals are pretty pervasive throughout our population. Here's contaminated water. That can include the chlorine that's used to kill the bacteria in your drinking water. Um, you still want to get the chlorine out. And that can, can include the fluoride. They should have never put fluoride in the water. It's a, a, a dangerous um, uh, poison. So there you go. That's the onion. So you got to peel back from the outside, work your way in, and get to those intracellular organisms. These organisms love to live in what's known as reservoirs. A cell is a reservoir. Um, ligaments and tendons and the central nervous system, those are reservoirs. And plus these um, locations are hard for the immune system to get to. So you don't have much immune system activity inside your knee or inside your brain. And so you can have an organism causing rheumatoid arthritis in your knee. Or you can have an organism in your brain causing Parkinson's or, or autism. Now the main symptoms that people get from intracellular organisms would be fatigue and joint pain. So the fatigue is persistent. A nap doesn't help. You wake up tired in the morning still. Different foods don't help. You end up drinking uh, caffeine all the time or maybe sugar. And that just exacerbates the problem. But it's the only fuel that your body can use because the sugar goes straight to your muscles. Now, the joint pain could be uh, uh, inflammatory and then not, like up and down, up and down. Now, with these organisms, there are so many potential uh, different types that you can kill one if you're trying to target one, but then the next one shows up, and then the next one, then the next one. So you gotta think of this as a bio burden. All the organisms together, you're helping the body get rid of all of them instead of just trying to target one at a time, which is what conventional medicine tries to do. Now, I had mentioned Lyme. The conventional treatment for Lyme is antibiotics, and there's three different ones that they rotate through. But the antibiotics are not very good. They're just not smart enough. They're not complex enough. Your body is a complex organism, and these bad bugs are complex too. That's why you need a complex solution, and it's in those herbs. So. And then you want to detoxify, and you also want to get rid of um, any sort of pesticides, you know, exposures at work or whatever else is in this onion. And you want to go to a dentist and clean your teeth out, and you want to take care of all this stuff. The next slide I want to go over are, here we have 11 different organisms that have been known to be sitting inside cells. And here's a whole bunch of different symptoms that can occur and then you try to match them up and it doesn't really work out that way it's just a mess so you don't really you can't really go by symptoms you just you want to go by um, thinking in terms of this bio burden and then starting to go through a holistic program where you're changing your life and you're taking a variety of products intelligently with guidance to detoxify and dry things up and it's called drainage and all these various things to do and then you get better and better and better now you may have your setbacks and you may have some discouragement but there has to be an increase in your health over time and it's over months and even years so keep this in mind as you go through this go through any sort of holistic healing program whether it's with me or somebody else i know you want to focus on your memory. I know you want to focus on your flu-like symptoms. Maybe you have dark urine. I'm just going through some of these lists, some of these uh, symptoms that are listed here. But the point is, these symptoms go away as you get better. This is the last slide I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you Dr. Armin Schwarzbach. He's a medical doctor in Germany. He's the guy I got these slides from, and his lab is arminlabs.com. So they have a symptom survey where you put your symptoms down and then from that, they recommend their lab tests to find out what organisms are most likely in your body. What is your bio burden? And then from there, your program can be tweaked. And even if you don't run the lab, at least from the symptom survey itself, it will tell you maybe the five most likely organisms that you have hiding out in your cells, in your reservoirs. So we'll start using this and uh, then we can help more people.
If you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video.